We have established that zero is our lowest state in the harmonic oscillator, the so-called ground state. It has eigenvalue lambda equal to zero, this is the eigenvalue of the number operator, or its energy eigenvalue E is one half times h bar omega. Next, there should be a state with lambda equal to one and energy equal to three halves h bar omega. So let's call this state one. On the one hand, we know that two eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillator are orthogonal to each other. This means the inner product of zero and one vanishes. This is because the Schrodinger equation is a special kind of a sturm louis problem. This guarantees that eigenfunctions to different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. On the other hand, we know that the states 0 and 1 are related to each other via the ladder operators. So for instance, applying the annihilation operator or the lowering operator A onto the state 1 should be proportional to the state 0. And here is some kind of constant. Also, if we apply the creation operator a dagger onto our state 0, this should yield the state 1, again with some kind of constant. In this video, we will calculate these constants in the general case for eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillator. First, C1. If we apply a on any state n, we now say this is equal to C1 times the state n minus 1. To calculate this, we can take the norm on both sides of this equation. The norm of some state phi is defined as follows. So on the left side, we perform a Hermitian conjugate and change the ket to a bra and also change a to a dagger. And then it's the same state again, a and n. And on the right hand side, we have the absolute value of c1 squared and our state n minus 1. On the left side, we have the number operator, and on the right side, since we always take our states to be normalized, this is 1. The eigenvalue of the number operator on some state n is always n. Finally, we see that c1 is equal to the square root of n. So now, let's do the same calculations for c2, so that we can see what is the constant if we apply the creation operator. This is very similar to the calculations we did before, so the first thing to do is taking the norm on both sides. The term on the right side is plus 1, and these terms here can be written differently using the commutator. So now we have the state n, then the operator n plus 1, and again the state n, and on the right hand side just c2. Well, the eigenvalue of the number operator is always the number that's inside the vector here. So we have n plus 1 times the inner product of n, and this is c2 squared. Remember, these states are normalized, so now we know that c2 is equal to the square root of n plus 1. Let's do some examples. First, let's write our equations using the constants that we calculated. So for example, if we apply a on the state 4, what we get is the square root of 4 times the state 3. Or if we apply a dagger on the state 7, this gives us the square root of 8 and the state 8. An easy way to remember the constants here, the square root of n and the square root of n plus 1, is that the annihilation operator a has a strong resemblance to a derivative of a polynomial function. And as for a dagger, this resembles the rules for integration. 